Doing an introduction to a video is a little bit like trials. Um, you've got the pressure on. Uh, today, we've definitely got the pressure on. We've got Chris Ackrig on the channel. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we thought we'd take Chris on a trail ride and he'd introduce you to some techniques on normal trail riding and obstacles that you might encounter along the way. And also, we might tackle a hill climbing masterclass, right? Yeah, that trail that you've been after for years, Steve, today is gonna be possible. Or not. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need your minder? Uh, <laughs> what, do it despite having a minder? Despite having a minder. That is hard. That is so hard. No, get out of here! <laughs> no! 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 I think the word is no, but it was definitely a yes. <laughs> oh, what? what? That is just, oh my. Right, I'm, this, in this video, I'm gonna try not to swear, because. Oh, that's done my head in the hole. <laughs> that went better than I thought, actually. <laughs> thought I might be there for a little while, to be honest, but hey, I'll take first time. <laughs> it's always good in his first time, right? Yeah, it's, uh, do you know what? It's really weird. I was on about this the other day. Like, sometimes when you do something first time, it's like, no, oh, that wasn't that hard. But then these other first times, it's like, that was that felt good. Do you know that when, was one of them. Do you know when you're on the bike and you're in the woods? Do you know if you clean a section, do you try to make yourself do it three times clean, or are you just happy with doing it once and get the hell out of there? Depends what it is. Yeah. And I think it depends what mood I'm in. <laughs> like my dad always said, like three times you know it. Yeah. You know you can do it. Like you know, and that's difficult. It's a really good training technique. Yeah. I feel. Um, but, but you could be you could be there all day. Yeah, you you could be there all day, and you might have like you know. Yeah, I don't know. It's not something that I, I live and die by anymore. Yeah. Maybe on the motorbike, I was probably more into that. But like, yeah, I'm, if I'm just doing something on my own in the woods, I think if I've done something, it all boils down to what it is, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. some stuff just feels cool. So you want to do it like, you know, want to make sure you master it three times. Yeah. Or it's just good for you, you know, for your physicality as well, you know? Like, like the uh, rollback manual to log. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot, there's, there's some stuff that you know Trying to, you're sort of playing with fire a little bit if you're trying to do it three times, so there's no point even stressing yourself about it. Yeah, because you, know? you just get tired, right? You just get tired, I'll yeah. just get over it. That'll do, won't it? Any way ski right over that? There's probably one right way, but I could probably do it five ways. <laughs> uh, so, go ahead, give us a demo first then, and we'll talk through it. We're just going straight in? Yeah. Give us a demo, so go give us a demo. We'll have a look at the, <clears throat> we'll have a look at the sort of fine detail involved. There's a bit of grip for stars. That's number one, right? Yeah, I guess so. But if you're doing, I always think like, if you're doing it straight, so it's a straight edge, you know, 90 degrees to it. Yeah. I'm like not as bothered about grip, to be honest. Right. Because you're not going to be squirreling off. If you're coming at an angle, yeah, it, it dramatically changes it. But I have seen you where you where you come from a standstill, you get onto the log and then you power off. Surely, I mean, if there's no grip there, you're, you're screwed, right? Yeah, but as long as you're getting like, I guess I'm confident in my ability, so I know <laughs> I'm going to be able to place it where I need to. But I guess if you're not just getting far enough over, obviously, like if you get over the, the brow of it, so yeah, to yeah. speak, you're going to be just if you, like a controlled fall the right way. A control fall. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Come on then, let's get let's let's go for a let's go for a rolling. I guess this is a bit uphill and downhill. You're gonna yeah. go from it from, from above or below. I mean there's I think there's little nuances between like going up and down. Yeah. I think obviously coming up you've got like hundred percent control of your speed. Going down you've obviously got a bit of gravity that you've got to account for. Yeah. So you're having to like break and go with it rather than coming up you're like you're pushing against it. Which do you prefer? I, going up's always better, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So it's just all about controlling your speed if you're coming downhill, you know, having, you know, good visual. And then what we want to be doing, we want to be picking the front wheel up, hitting it right on the apex, and then transferring your weight completely from the back wheel to the front, and just giving it a little pop as you go. Front wheel. Ooh. So, so the question is, 
Are you? Uh, how much force is going through your through your arms when you're doing this? When you get to that point, when you get to that point with your wheels there, yeah. How much of this are you giving mm. it on the, on the bars? I think it's more like your compression on your suspension, rather than there's not. I mean, you're obviously working it with your arms and your legs. I mean, there's probably 50-50 leg on arms. I guess this is the classic. Everything's involved when you're doing it from a standstill. Yeah. Whereas when you're doing it from when you're rolling, there's less there's less body movements involved, right? Yeah, obviously because you've got to get up to a speed that's going to like work for the actual movement. Yeah. And if we're going from this this distance, you know, obviously we've got to generate the speed first to carry us over the log. Go on then. So, yeah. So I start switch because I know. Switch on. The... I mean, it's just it's just so smooth, isn't it? How how does he do it so smoothly? From that distance, I know where I need to start, so I've got my perfect position seat-wise. So that, that's the key thing, isn't it? Knowing yeah. your distance and where, what position your pedal is going to be in when, you, when your front wheel hits the top. Yeah, because a lot of the time, if you were coming from further back, it wouldn't be as much of an option. Be, uh, uh, it wouldn't be as important because you'd be coming into it, and as you get closer, you, you free your wheel. Yeah. And then start picking the pedal up again once you know that distance is like premium for your pedal strokes. But I guess the thing is, you might come across a log, you're going through some undergrowth on a bit of single track, next thing is a log. It happens all the time, doesn't it? Yeah. So in lots of instances, you're going to be coming across it with a short distance to play with. Yeah. I'm not even going to try, because it's going to be, so the last time I was with Chris, there was a little step, <laughs> and it was over the handlebars. <laughs> so you already put that in your mouth, you're bringing negativity into your mind already, <laughs> Steve. Honestly, I'm freaking out. I'm feeling the pressures. I, I cannot actually deal with the pressure. I, I, literally, I, literally, I literally can't deal with the pressure. <laughs> well, I was like, going to say it was pretty, but it was functional. No, the thing is, that's how not to do it, because you're just going to smash your motor yeah. and your bash guard, right? Yeah. So what we didn't talk about is the fact that you actually need to clear the bottom of the bike, don't you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, the bikes are quite low nowadays. And it doesn't take much really when you do, you know when you're going over stuff. And I'm sure like if you've been out on the trail and you've done it, you'll notice that you do hit the undercarriage. Yeah. I mean on most bikes there is a certain amount of protection, but it's not really designed to take yeah. a big force like that. And yeah. obviously, you Watch know. the undercarriage, guys. Yeah. Tuck it in. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got it to tuck in, that is. So I literally went from there and then pulled it and rolled and it went to there. So yeah, so, so you've you need got to... the right technique but just not enough speed and momentum. Not enough energy. So what you need to do is like go like that, pull it, and then you need to hop it like that as well, don't yeah. you? Yeah. But so you've got to have time art. to compress your suspension, and as you're going over, you're lifting off the suspension, which gives you the help. Yeah. Especially with an e-bike with an extra weight. You're an eco. Yeah. He's actually an eco. So, so Chris, oh, I'm colorblind. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give that a go. I'm going to give that a go. Nice and smooth. He's got it. He's got it! <laughs> <laughs> thing is, my problem here is why can't I lift that back up like you can? I just, I think it is like, I think mean, a lot of it is like, is technique, it really is. Yeah. Because like, you know, like you, we were talking earlier um, off camera about you riding your motorbike. And like, when I ride my motorbike, I'm not the best motorbike rider, but it kills me because my technique's not that great. But obviously on this, you know, my technique's a little bit more dialed. And I, you know, because I can, because my technique's fairly decent. Yeah. You know, I don't really, decent. I don't, I don't, decent. I don't feel like that I get fatigued that much. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? Now, obviously you've ridden trials bicycles, trials motorcycles, mountain bikes. Would you actually do this on a mountain bike? I think like I I think you, well, you definitely could do it on, a, on a, a normal mountain bike, but I don't think like you'd be able to run the back in and have as much fun yeah. on a normal mountain bike. But yeah. it's just, it is a perfect thing. You could just like, I could play on that for an hour. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> I, think, I think what else teaches you, teaches you how to keep your front wheel in the air when yeah. you hit an obstacle, which is a great technique to be able to do on, a, on an e-bike, right? Yeah, and like something like this, obviously you find something, it's not like massive, there's not, it's very... This ain't the, massive. Yeah. I think you'll find it's almost the height of your front wheel. <laughs> but there's quite low consequence, that's what I'm saying, especially if you find something, you know, with nice, like, it nice depends. soft ground and stuff, and you could, yeah. you can, you build your confidence up doing something like this. So when it does come up in a trail, you, you have that ability in your head, you know, that you can always go, right, you know, it just comes in and you can handle the situation. Yeah. And I guess one thing which we're forgetting as well on something like this, it's just brilliant fun. <laughs> <laughs> Most important thing. 
So this technique is just a variant of what we've just been doing on the log, but all it is just slightly changing it and leaving your back wheel low. So that is using the sort of vague transition of the log to bring your back wheel over and just leaving your weight a little bit further back. What do you call it, a glorified wheelie? It's just a glorified wheelie. I think I'll leave that one. <laughs> <laughs> Onwards. Whoa, okay, so a um, bit of a drop. Now we've talked about your approach to lots of these obstacles today, but this is a different scenario. You've got a, a downhill section. Would you treat this any different on an e-bike? Totally honest, I don't think you would. Like, I mean, there's not much difference from a technique point of view. You know, you come in, get your speed, commit, and do your move. Square it up. Square it up, make sure you know Hopefully you'll have looked at it probably before, <laughs> which is probably a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, once you've got all that on control, you just come in and execute. The only thing different on an e-bike, I'd say, is the landing's going to be a little bit more harsh because obviously you're carrying that extra weight. You mean harsh? It's going to it's going to keep your momentum a bit more than on a manual. I guess a little bit more. Yeah. So you're going to go, you're going to push through your suspension more because literally you're carrying more weight. Yeah. Okay. Right. So. Uh... Folks, thanks so much for watching. Chris Ackrig doing some insane. Uh, mountain bike, not just e-bike, but mountain bike skills. It's really a pleasure to, to watch, Chris. Thanks so much Thank for coming much. down. Yep. Uh, which just remains this, uh, this drop, right? Yeah, don't get too close. You might fall! <laughs>